So I'm going to turn it over to Robbie. So. Thank you, Jeremy. Good morning, everybody. A uh, little back to tell you, I came to this conference in Houston several years ago, a long time ago, when we went to decide to go no-till. And that's where we began about 20 years ago with no-till. Um, did that primarily, but the last uh, fuse when we got into cover crops. Always got to brag on your family. The tall one is uh, graduated mechanical engineering. The pink shirt's my son. He's 19 at Jonesboro getting his uh, ag technologies degree, and he is farming currently. My wife, Stephanie, and my daughter, Logan. She's 12. Background, fifth generation. Uh, this year will be my 20. Second crop, primarily corn, rice, and beans. We used to grow cotton, but we got away from cotton and got into corn. Um, I don't call myself a no-till farmer. I call it a have-to till, because I only till when I have to. I try to do everything I can not to till. Um, this will be, this fall is my fourth, going into my fourth cover crop. Kind of how I got into cover crops. My dad was reading about them, kind of got excited. We had an MRBI contract, was anybody uh, familiar with Equip? Real similar to Equip, they pay you so much an acre to plant cover crops. We figured if we're going to play with this, we might as well do it on the government's dime. Started out with about 900 acres uh, our first year. Started out kind of weed control the compaction and uh, got into it. And these are some of the things we were looking at. And had some friends within RCS that been looking at cover crops, and they went to some different deals about it, and they really got me to look at the whole picture of what cover crops and, and our, the way we're looking at our cropping system today. I, I really think we need to get to more of a holistic approach in our agriculture. Uh, we'll get into some of that. So it started with 900 acres, cereal rye, radish, and clover. Uh, mixed it with fertilized, threw it out with a spinner truck, covered it with a better roller. Didn't get a very good stand. One side of the bed would have cover, one side of the didn't. Uh, don't plant it with a spinner, and don't kill your cover crop too early. That's I, I still fell under the same old, like we saw coming down here. Hey, it's warm. It's 50 degrees. Burn it down in January, and uh, that's that's you're not going to get. You'll get some benefits, but not near the benefits you need to get. So 14, 15. That's kind of my mix, and it's changed a little over the years. But as you can see, it's about a 30 to 35 dollar an acre crop to uh, plant. Plant just I bought a Great Plains 3S 3000 HD, which is kind of not a no-till, but it's a good heavy, pretty heavy-duty drill. Grab an angle on my beds, and uh, we started planting on 10, 9, or 14 of that year. Lessons learned: planted it too deep. One of my clutches went out, and when he got to the end of the field and he picked the drill up, that one side would plant, and it looked like a set of stairs that go from that tall to a foot tall. Okay, accident. Also know what variety seeds you're getting. South, if you're from the south, this is fairly new to, new to us. <clears throat> we planted uh, spring oats. Didn't handle the winter, didn't get much growth out of them. 15-16, uh, that's kind of the, the mix we went with. Uh, I always go a little heavier on legumes where I'm going to be going into corn. Back out on the beans, kind of nervous because the you always hear if you provide too much nitrogen to your beans, they'll cut out. You know, that's some stuff talking about urea on beans coming out. They've talked about uh, this last, that's uh, this last spring we're planting into our cereal rye. Uh, you can see it's about waist high, still not happy with that. It's 14 days after we burned it down with 22 ounces of weather max and 12 ounces of verdict. And you can see in 14 days, smoked everything in the field. If you look, you can see there's a winter pea that didn't quite get killed out, and you can see a few corn plants trying to come up. Um, go into some of the cost. I uh, get some questions from time to time. Well, what does it cost you to plant a cover crop? Well, as you saw, about $30, $35 an acre. Oh my God, that's so expensive. Well, look at your tillage. You know, disc, I call it a turbo kill, because if you're doing any tillage on your farm, you're killing it. About $12 an acre, field cultivators, your hairs, your land. These are kind of the basic field operations we're doing on our farms. So around our home, coming out of corn, a lot of times they hit it twice with the disc. They'll V-rip it, hair or land plane. 
drop in there with a better roller. You know, y'all all know how dry it stayed and nobody could handle going fishing or hunting, so they all just burned diesel. And uh, so everybody that put up their beds last fall gonna turn around and do it again this spring. Coming down here, we saw people disking. Of course, what are they gonna get to do in here in about three weeks? They're gonna do it again. You know, we're, for some reason we're addicted to spending money. So about $81, if you throw a, you know, fill a lot of people get it ready in the fall, then they'll fill cultivated again next spring before they hip it. So you're spending somewhere, and I feel this is pretty conservative, between 80 and almost $100 an acre from when you combine leaves to when the planter pulls in the field. And like I said, I, I feel that's real conservative in the kind of a corn bean rotation. Irrigation costs, where am I getting some savings there? I figure around my place it costs me about $750 an acre per irrigation now. You know, depending on where you're at and everything, but I just rough average. You know, beans and corn depend on the year too, but you can spend five irrigations. Look about $37.50. Cut two irrigations out of my corn this year. That's half my cover crop just in that just in my irrigation savings. Nothing else. Uh, and something I want y'all to look at, get with me after, but Google Doug Peterson rainfall simulator or just a rainfall. How many's ever seen a rainfall simulator? Okay. If you want to turn your head of what you're doing on your farm with irrigation, watch a rainfall simulator. I got I'm smart enough to figure out how to implant the video. I wanted to show one. But the gist of it is they cut three to five trays. They'll use conventional tillage, no till, no till with covers. And what most guys in my area, they'll go to the forest and cut a pan of what the forest is. Trays got an angle on them. They're perforated. They hang a bucket off the front, a bucket underneath. They put rain gauges on it, and they got a wiper sprayer. Run it till it, you know, anywhere half inch, inch of rain. And it shows how much infiltration you get and how much runoff you get. Conventional till fill will not infiltrate more than one inch. So you wonder why you got to irrigate every five to seven days. It's all going out the bottom. You're not getting anything to the roots. Um, so, but if you if you watch it, it'll 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 get you. There again, what did I learn last year? Don't burn down too early. If you don't let your cover crop get mature enough, it's too vegetative. The CDN ratio isn't high enough, and it'll burn it up in an instant. You won't get enough biomass to make the season. And that's generally, that's why I, I personally haven't really seen as much savings on the chemical side yet other than, you know, in the past I was doing, even under no-till, I was doing a fall burn down, resid, you know, burn down with residual, a spring burn down with residual, then another burn down behind the planter. So I've cut out the fall and one of the springs, but I don't put any residual out behind my planter right now. You know, and this year I'm gonna probably cut one out and just do one burn down at planting. And I'm probably I've even learned that uh, to start pushing my planting out, I think I get more benefit. And and you know, if I'm gonna spend the thirty-five dollars an acre on this crop, I might as well try to get all I can out of it and get that biomass and uh, try to really you know get my money's worth out of it. So I'm still burning down too early. Those pictures you saw waist high, that was my best corn crop I had this year. My corn was off, but it still made about 187. Uh, so it's it's there. And guys, it, it works. It takes a 180 degree mindset to change. Uh, I had a, I do some research with a guy, they rent small fields from me. Had it in cover crop last year, he wanted to rotate. He left a little bit of it. He kept telling me, I can't, I can't plant in that. What am I going to do? My planter's, and all he's got is a monosome planter. No attachments on it. I told him, I said, don't worry about it. You'll do fine. And I was amazed because he went in and did some burn down residual trials. So, you know, he had four to six rows wide, about five foot little just spots killed out through it. The rest of it, it basically went to maturity. You could go out there anytime through the summer. And if you went to the spot he burned down in February, early March, it was dirty. You know, still, you could tell it was no-till, but you, there was very little evidence that there was any cover crop in that field. You step back over, 
and even 10 days can make a massive difference. There'd be a layer of stuff that thick. And uh, you could go to then the rest of the field he worked. And of course he had strips that he didn't do anything with. He did, he burned that down. I think, I think he said he sprayed it twice with Liberty. No residuals other than where he was doing his residual trial. And there was not one pigweed that broke through where he didn't disturb the cover crop. And the rest of the spot is right in front of my house, so I got to look at it all year. There'd be strips of pigweeds, chest high, solid all the way through the field. You know, so that was with no residuals. We had pretty good control there. This is on my farm. Here's some things I'm going to pull on you. Your heart strings with a little bit. On the left, you can see the corn in the background. That's a 40 acre corn field, six inches of rain in 18 hours. The one on the right is a field just the other side of it. It was in rice. I hadn't quite figured out the rice with covers, but I had to get it back into beds. It was still stale seed bed, but you see how chocolate milk that water is. And that's the same fields. And one thing that really just light bulb went off with me recently with my kids and my son getting involved with me is, you know, $35 an acre, that's a lot. But if you look around what, you know, we're fixing to have to take responsibility for what we're doing to this, this earth. And we're letting all our topsoil go to the Gulf of Mexico. We've got a dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico because of tillage. And if we don't stop letting our topsoil go down the rivers, we're not leaving something for the next generation. Guys, this is not our earth. We're just here temporarily. When we die, it's still going to be here for somebody else to live and supply for. And I personally think the high inputs, the high yielding environments we're producing right now, and the, the salts that we're putting out with these fertilizers, we're eventually fixing to get to a negative return and we're going to burn up our soil. We cannot put enough inputs and let all the topsoil go down the bottom and all these salts go out with it and fertility that we're letting wash off our fields. I say eventually, I think we've got to get back to, like I said, a holistic approach. And as you say, that's my son. And that's like I said, I gotta leave something for him. I've gotta leave something for his kids. If I want a sixth, seventh, eighth generation to continue to do this at our home, I've got to change what I'm doing. I got to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility. There again, same type picture. Coming off one field, coming off another field. That was in April 30th. The field you see with the mud was worked in February and had several rains on it. So that's not fresh worked ground washing off. That's still seabed. And you still see how much turbidity we're getting out of this. This is kind of misleading. That's just a shadow of a tree. <laughs> but this 40 acre cornfield, it drains off right here. That's the ditch that I dug out last spring. I cleaned it out uh, first of March. This was the end of April. So the water came off, went all the way down to the highway, and you can still see, even though that was a freshly cleaned out ditch, how clear the water is. That's a plant under the water that I took a picture of. So even in a freshly clean field, and that's that field, that's the water coming off a 40 acre cornfield after six inches of rain. You know, right here, it's not the best picture. Does it work? Earthworms. Earthworms start showing up really quick. The uh, when you start turning it over, you can see a little bit up here. Your soil start looking like cottage cheese. That's that's good stuff. Does it work? Got a report. Beneficials are eating your worms. Guys, we got to quit this. Or fungicide. So go ahead and throw the insecticide in. It's only three dollars an acre. We all want to know where to cut costs. Start quitting listening to some of the guys going, just because you're doing it, do it. The only, I do not, that's why I hire a scout. Why am I going to pay somebody $40,000, $50,000 a year for him just to say, well, at V6, you're going to do this. At V7, you're going to do this. I can do that myself. I don't need to hire somebody. I need him out there telling me, 
well, you've got some pressure, but let's just wait and see what happens. Beneficials will work. I think, just like the antibacterial soap, it don't know the good from the bad. These chemicals don't know the good stuff from the bad stuff. It's going to kill everything. If you give it time and get back to holistic approach, your beneficials grow. Your good fungi grows in your soil. So if you'll give it time, you know, it, it, it starts working. The system works on itself. It, it'll heal itself if you let it and not outthink Mother Nature. Talking to a farmer last week about this, and he said, yeah, but there's yield drag. There's yield drag. I said, if I cut $100 an acre out of your system, even if you had a 10 bushel and your beans lost 10 bushels at $10, you're still even. So, but talking to Bob Scott before, he goes, you know, <laughs> all my tests the last three years with cover crops, my no-till covers have out-yielded everything or been the same. So there is no yield drag. I cut $100. I put a $100 bill in your pocket. Or I just say even if that, if it costs me 35 to plant it or 35 for the seed and 10 to plant it, 45 I still put nearly $55 in your pocket. You know, it's it, it, it works. That's this fall's cover crop. You can see some of the uh, radishes out there. I didn't take put when I took that picture, but that's uh, basically the same mix. But you can see I load up a little heavier on the the uh, legumes where I'm going to be planting corn. Um, this year I had my bed. I'm still not quite, even though I'm getting less and less irrigation. Um, I hadn't been in any of these fields in about four years with any tillage, combine, cover crop, cash crop. That's my that's that's my system. Um, but I went in. Guys, don't understand. If if all you've got are old beds, and you're you're doing it for irrigation, why do you need to disc them down, float it off to put a bed back in it? All I did is I ran a set of disc bedders once, a better roller right behind it, and since it was fresh beds, we planted it with the beds. You know, I had the plant, and I, I tried to have the plant, the, my planter running right behind my combine. If, if I've got the manpower, when we were doing this, he was running right behind the, uh, the hippers. Like I said, when I learned I was planting it too deep now, that drills hydraulic down pressure, I put it down to about 500 pounds. I put it as low a setting as I can get it, and he probably runs seven, seven and a half mile an hour. All we're doing is using it for basically a, a distribution method. You know, I know I was going to go with a plane this year and try some with a plane before the bean lost their leaves, but uh, I, I saw that my beds were not in the shape to do that, so we, we had to do a little work. Um, I was going to do it on the whole farm. I tried burning some corn stubble, but some of my ends where that rain kind of docked my corn stand back, had a lot of grass, the grass wouldn't burn. I looked at it and I said, uh, these beds will be good enough to make it another year. I didn't go out there with the disc and do all this work. You know, one thing I hear too from people is, well, my water don't get out. Well, that's the name of the game. You don't want to see water in the ditch. That means you didn't get any infiltration. Look right here, I'm going down the highway. One field's on the north side of the road, one field's on the south side of the road. Look at the water sheeting. This was right after rain. No water standing whatsoever on that field. Same exact, I mean, little, the road splits the fit. It's highway that splits, same exact sandy soil. Only water standing in that entire field is where a cover crop did not stand. Where I did not have a stand of cover crop, I had a little bit of sheeting. My water goes down. I think in the south, I don't think I, it'll it'll take some time. My reservoir is under my roots right now. My water's I'm, I'm building a water table underneath my plant. That water will still be there. You know, this year I'm gonna try to go to some some soil uh, soil moisture probes to see so I can actually prove this what I'm thinking is working. Uh, this spring went through my farm. I just do the hand method, walk down, grab a handful of dirt, make a dough ball, don't need to irrigate. Left the farm, went to a uh, program with my daughter for a couple days, came back, went by a neighbor's field, corn taco road. 
oh, it done got hot, it done got dry, you know, what have I done, I'm, I'm behind. So I got out in my fields, got nervous, still making dough balls. Still had plenty of moisture. Had one field that I did do conventional tillage. I could go out, sandy, make your hand open up, just run off like flour. Step 20 feet over across the turn row, make a dough ball in your hand. You know, it works, guys. The healthier you keep your plants, the cooler you keep your plants. You know, I, I learned a few years ago, a lot of times when we're irrigating in the summer, it's as much for cooling the plant as it is for irrigating the plant, in my opinion. That, you know, you got to get your plants to shut down. But if you've got a biomass on top of that ground that's keeping your soil cooler, your plants aren't burning up as much. You know, for consultants, you both have to buy into this system. It's, 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 if your consultant can't buy in it, you need to find a new consultant. If consultants, y'all aren't buying in it, you know, you need to look at it and, and, and take a little different mindset on this and have a little more patience. Um, it, it is a risk, um, but I feel like so far in my operation, the risk that I've taken, it's far outweighed the, uh, the benefits. Well, there it goes. Like they told us, a lot of the conferences I go to, this spring, this week, coming down here, you're going to see a lot of this. You get nervous, you get antsy. What do I do? Oh my God, they're in the field planting. You know, a couple years ago, planting corn. Me and a neighbor kept calling each other. When you going to plant? Everybody else is planting something. I don't know. I think I'm going to wait a I am too. You know, about a week later, he couldn't handle it. He had to go plant. Why aren't you going to plant? I think I'm going to wait another week. I just don't know. This weather doesn't look good to me. Waited about 10 days later, planted. We harvested corn the same day. You know, don't get antsy. You know, if you got to, go fishing. Go golfing. Go, go leave the farm. Get away from it. You know, that's... That's the hardest thing that we had to get used to. Was everybody else going to run the field and do something? You don't have to. You know, I, I have more time with my family because of cover crops and no-till. And I actually have, I can do more with the cover crops than I ever did with no-till because you'll be surprised when you have that green or that, that mat out there, there's times your neighbors can't plant because it's, it's too wet and it sticks to their tires. That cover crop actually gives you something to to roll on top of. Uh, sometimes you got to be careful. You know, it, it's kind of like cutting. Sometimes you may have to wait for the dew to get off if you're not timing it right, because it'll hairpin on you. You know what? If I'm not working, tilling, doing all this, you know, we just wait a little longer in the morning. Don't get in as big a hurry. Run a little later at night. You know, whatever you need to do. Uh, it, it's little things like that. That's my 12 year old. She likes to go play in the water with me sometimes. Um, you know, but that, that's, that's what I've gotten to. You know, my, my motto in my head is I got four F's. I got my faith, my family, fun, and farm. Now, my wife knows from March to November, fun and farm switch. She, you know, that, unless it rains or something, those two switch. But my faith and my family never change. And I got to a point a few years ago that, that the farm about got in the way of all of that. And I finally looked at my dad and I said, you know what? There ain't a decision y'all can't make on this farm if I'm gone for an hour. So there's times you got to get away. Uh, I got a real realization on family, 2011. We were farming about 6,000 acres of row crop. It was uh, March 17th. Put my dad in the hospital. He went from 100% to zero percent in five days, encephalitis brain infection. It was always a joke with my dad. Your job isn't hard, my job's not hard. I said, but you're not gonna do my job anymore. Because when he when I came on, we went to more technology, more, you know, flow meters and precision and, and newer equipment. And he goes, Man, auto steer's great. Don't expect me to learn how to use it. Do it all you it's all on you. And I was fine with that. And I always joked, I said, but when you leave town and I gotta do both our jobs, it's hell. It's tough. 
in one way, I mean, he, he's alive and well, but that week I lost my father, my partner, my boss, and my friend. I didn't know what my dad did. I honestly didn't. And I had to figure it out real quick. Because it wasn't like he broke his leg or he got a cold. That brain infection, he spent 17 days in the hospital in 2011. Set 11 days straight. Spent 16 weeks on intravenous IVs. Every eight hours, we had to give him a, a antibiotics. And that was 6,000 acres. And I told him, I said, I can't do it without you. This is not fun anymore. He was planning to go till 70, which he'll be 70 this year. But the, the way it affected his brain, he basically had, you know, he had to go into retirement. So 11 went from 6,000 to 5,012. And then in 13 is when we went to uh, 3,000 acres. We let a lot, we had a lot of dry land ground that we let go, kept a more productive ground, um, and, and had a hard learning curve. You know, like I said, when you got a business partner that he was really good at the office and the organization, and I was really good at delegating and getting it done. And I had to learn what the office was, and I'm still struggling with that today. So like I said, the family, you know, it's there. It's important, guys. The farm will be there tomorrow. The family might not. Uh, my daughter likes to do little screen savers, and she's, you know, that's what's on my phone. Keep calm and farm on. You know, don't, don't overthink it sometimes. And that's the end of that. If you got any questions, there's my contact info. If uh, I got some cards with me, if you need a card or have any questions. You said don't don't bear it down too quick. Which you which you rule of thumb? Man, let's see. Where's that? Can I answer that question for you? Till it's almost dead, anyways. If you're you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're we're planting green standing. Uh, that was full four. We burned it. Let's see. Burned it down on four or five. Uh, Adam Chapel spoke last week. Me and him bounced a lot of stuff off of. Um, he'll burn it down the day before, day after. Uh, that's why I said, you know, this spring, wind blew, wind blew, wind blew. You know, oh my God, you know, I, I still get antsy like everybody does. We dropped in there and sprayed all 3,000 acres, except for a spot or two that had wheat bite and about a two-day period, three-day period. My man worked 24-7 trying to get it done. Nervous, no, oh, we got to get it killed, got to get it killed. Figured out again, and every, you know, the fox said the first year, I was like everybody, hey, it's January the 1st, why aren't we burning down? And then my friends got me, you know, we need to look at this, because under the MBR, MRBI, it was, we're going to do, if it's a 600-acre farm, <laughs> we did this 300 acres, and swapped over and did this 300 acres, and swap, it was, it was rotate. And they said, man, Everything we're seeing, we need to see continue. One way I look at it, if you if the last meal you had was Thanksgiving, and I didn't feed you again till March, what happens? You die. That's what we're doing to our soul. The cleaner we keep it, soil's a living thing, guys. It's not you know it, it's not dirt. And and one of the biggest things that's aggravated me and made me so mad about things recently in agriculture is everything, everything we do is for the soybean plant, is for the corn plant, is for the rice plant. When you get recommendations, what is it? I want 200 bushel corn, but this is the fertility you do. Not one thing do we do for the soil. So when we don't, if, if it's a living thing, it's just like us. We don't eat, we don't live. So, we don't, if you, if you do fall burn down, you're, I mean, as bad as weeds are, at least there's a living root there. I mean, I'd rather see somebody not do anything and have wheat, you know, hen bit and stuff out there. No, it's not great, but at least there's a living root to feed the microorganisms. You know, the way they start building and turning and churning, it's just like building a house. You know, they're, they're steadily growing, they're, they're multiplying, they're doing better. We quit feeding them, they die. You know, like I said, that's, that's where it's at. This is food for the soul. 
you know, and, and I, I'm getting where I want it, you know, like Adam Chappell says, if it's not slapping the top of his tractor, he ain't happy. <laughs> you know, biomass is what we're going for. You know, Robbie, you had a, a pretty good list of different cover crops that you use. Could you share with us kind of where you started and kind of how you evolved into that? I don't do test plots very well. Tim Smith, like I said, I, I did the MRBI contract. I, I went to a few meetings. I called Tim Smith. So I buy my cover crop seed from. Um, he goes, these are kind of some mixes we need to go with. Uh, like I said, started started out fairly simple. Where is it? Uh, cereal rye radish clover. Just something simple. I personally do not like radishes. At least like the the, the tillage radish. My personal opinion, every picture you see on the cover of Delta Farm Press or Press, they sit there and guy standing there with this tillage radish this far and it's got 18 inch where it's been down the ground. Well, guess where that came from? Guys up north where they got three foot topsoil and there is no hard pan. My area, they go about six inches and make a 90 degree turn. And I add that they're very hard to control. And, and if you, most of this stuff pretty forgiving I just run Roundup 24D I'm going to have to change the burn down program this year because I plan on burning down at planting so 24D is not really an option now um, I still think the radishes the fibrous roots are doing good but I also think the cereal rye black oats some of your real fine haired roots get down in there talking to my manager just last week about it he goes three years ago three or four years ago before we went into this he was having to use a hammer to take soil samples Y'all know how dry it was this fall. He said, I didn't hammer one sample on 3,000 acres. He said, I could just take a soil sample. You know, it's working. What about insect complex when that planting time when you got that green problem? I, only pro this is the first year I had a problem. It was my fault. Typical, plant the whole farm. You drive around it, everything looks good. Had a 20 acre field right in the middle of the farm, never drove by it. Had my refuge corn in it. Has a tree line run through it. Worms came out, hooked around. Eight, 20, well, eight, 12 acres of non-BT corn. They got to the row of BT. Stopped. I could have prevented that. That's not the cover crop. So I think if it, even if it would have just been no-till, those worms would have come out of those trees. I think some of the horror stories we're hearing out of insects with cover crops they didn't do that. I, I hope. I hope. Well, if it hurts your feelings, be you have to get over. It. Didn't do your homework. <laughs> didn't do your homework. You did a winter pea to a soybean crop to a winter pea to a soybean crop. Well, you but you, you bred a monoculture. You know, it, it, and I honestly think, and when you get into these diverse groups, and if you ever hear some of these other guys speak, Adam Chapel's fixing to go into a rotation where he goes wheat. Summer cover crop with like a 15-way blend into a bean crop with a fall cover. To a, you know, he's going to start a wheat bean corn rotation and do a summer a summer cover crop. The diversity is where it's at, in my opinion. Now, sir, if you want to start simple, pick your cereal rye. Can I make a caveat yeah. with that? Um, I grew up in South Louisiana, and we've tried cover crops before. And they were, but they didn't have the technology that, that we had today. They didn't have the mindset that you have. But we still need to be aware in South Louisiana of the green, uh, the, that green bridge. And, and, and look, I mean, everywhere is different. Y'all may have more where there's stuff. Now, Arkansas, we had about a three-day period where it got down. It didn't get above freezing for two or three days. You know, but I also think, like I said, you go back to that one picture where it says your beneficials are eating your worms. Absolutely. We just have to... I mean, you got to, and that's like I said, worms ate my corn. That that was my fault. I wouldn't. You're going to spend more time in the field watching what's going on in your field, and that's one thing that I've never been good at, and I should have. I need to do more. Is your farm will tell you what it needs. You know, it it, it will. If you listen to it and look at it, it's telling you what it needs. Because you look at your timber. Very few of you ever fertilized your timber. You know what? We had a record acre crop this year. How did it do that? You know, 
Watch Mother Nature. She has a life cycle. And we've gotten in the way of the life cycle on our, our, our operations. And like I said, it, Bob Scott, there, there's, there's proof that cover crops are done. And I thought, I was, I'm a no-till farmer. Man, I got this thing lit. You know, look at my organic matter. Well, or, organic matter is a tool. It's an indicator. We were looking at soil samples on the way down here. My organic matter runs from two and a half to almost four. Uh, I, I've got some other stuff I hadn't put in. I'm not, I hadn't built the fertility thing. I'm going to work on a little harder this year. I can show where I've got soil samples from the 14 crop and then this year overlapped them last year. We just, money's tight, guys. We backed way off on some fertility on, on P and K. Full soil samples this fall. Hardly no difference in my, my analysis. We planted soybeans behind corn in a cover crop that had a, a big problem with slugs. They, they were eating the seed underground. Have you, have you had any slugs? I hadn't had any slug problems. Um, I was noticing this summer when I was doing some irrigation out walking in the fields, mm -hmm. I had snails everywhere. And I've asked several people about what they nice like. Now, I, we can't tell you. They're not doing any damage, but, and I, 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 but I've heard slug issues. I, don't quite know what the answer, you know, every area is going to have a little different, you know, it's, it's, you know, just like in Arkansas, North, we, you know, Central Arkansas can plant before North Arkansas and South Arkansas plants before us. It's, you got to learn and play and see what works for you. Um, you know, I, there is going to be a learning curve. There is going to be some time when you go from, you know, it's, it's, it's just like a starving person. When you bring them to the buffet, they go crazy. The same thing your soul. One year I let some stuff get real rank. My guys hated me. He said, we can't see the roads. We don't know how to put We don't know what we're doing. We can't see nothing. And I thought, man, I've got this figured out. By July, you could not tell I had a cover crop in that field. I woke up the earth, and she went to eat. And she ate all that biomass up like that. You know, when you start feeding the beast, you better, and that's where... The more you get into this, and you, need, you know, it's just like us. You don't want to eat steak. I mean, yeah, you love steak, but after a week of steak, you don't want steak no more. So you got to have a diversity out there, you know. That, and that's that's why you do legumes and different grasses and, and brassicas. And Ronnie, a lot of us have turned soil into dirt and propping it up with fertilizer, commercial fertilizer. What we're doing. I heard a guy so, speak not long ago. We'll talk about. It. He. Uh, Put a pretty good analogy out there for me on some of the commercial fertilizers. He goes, oh, you know, you got polys and orthos. He said, your polys are as much as your everybody uses granular or chain linked. If every vehicle on the interstate was chain linked together, would we go anywhere? Until those chains are broke apart and can move freely, it's not doing us any good. Now your orthos, they're not chain link, so as soon as you, that's why it doesn't take as much ortho based fertilizer as it does poly, in my opinion. It's more freely available in the soil. Um, one thing I do on my corn, I do put in for three to five gallons, depending on what year, but 1137 mo. I've gotten away from that and gone into the poly fertilized, but just keep that plant healthier a little longer because most of the time I'm not putting out any pre nitrogen at all. Um, if I do, like last year when I slung some P and K, I did it with DAP, and whatever I needed in P and K, I just used the DAP, and that's only not, you know, some farms only had 20 units of N of DAP going in. My second shot of urea, I brought everything up to the same level, and then my third shot, you know, brought it up again to, you know, depending on the farm. I, this year I kind of went crazy, and I hey, need 250 units of N. I, Probably shouldn't have done that. That's something I'm gonna look at this year. I'm gonna back way off. How do you imagine uh, corn residue prior to planting cover crop? Cro cover crop? Prior to planting cover crop. Plant. Just get an angle and go. Chopper shredder or anything? Nope. Right behind. I, you know, I may run my header a little lower. I got a Drago with knife rolls. Chops up pretty good. You know, still got, you no, know, one foot, 18 inch stalks. Grab an angle. Like I said, I'm really. I, I'm not really worried about seed to soil contact. Uh, you know, it's generally cool. You know, it's cool enough. It's not going to rain. It'll lay there for. Uh, that's this year. Y'all saw how dry it was. Got nervous, and I was like, eventually you got to plant it. You can't wait for the rain because, like I said, sometimes when it starts, it don't stop. 
it'll lay there pretty good, surprisingly. Um, two years ago, one thing I noticed is you wouldn't believe how much residual moisture you start gaining from this. My bean, my planted my corn behind my corn first, then planted my beans cover. My bean cover came up before my corn because it still had moisture left over from my last bean irrigation enough that it, it, it germinated. Or it, you couldn't tell it, but it did germinate because then the next rain came. I was like, why am I seeing this and not that? That's planted 10 days after this. There was residual moisture just from irrigating beans. But like I said, and one thing I get away, I single row my corn and I twin row my beans. I'm on 38 inch beds. So, you know, I'm splitting that corn. But once you get into this, you wake that beast up, you'd be surprised how much of that root wad and, and corn is just, you know, it'll just blast out of the way, no problem. What are we gonna do on the rice soybean rotation on plate? That's what I'm still trying to, that's something different for Arkansas is the rice. Um, Adam Chapel, he's playing with the row, he's gonna jump in. I said, some of us ain't real smart. We jump, we jump deep. We figure out how deep the water is after we jump. He gonna go straight to about 800 to 1,000 acres of row water rice. He gonna plant all of it straight in cover. You know, I've done, I, I tell you what I did do, and I was really impressed and I'm stupid for not continuing to do it. Level to feet, zero grade to field three years ago. It was so hard, it, would break, it was breaking the gangs off my disc. Dropped in there and I just, I lightened my drill as light as I could, slung some seed out there. Went in that spring with a uh, Kelly tool after I burned it down. Behind pans with the cover crop, it made 210. You know, and, and it was, and it didn't have any problem planting that next spring. What? I can't remember what I put out there. It's probably cereal rye and something else, but you know, it's it works. But rice, like I said, it's conventional would probably be a little easier because you're planting 60, 90 pounds. Hybrid, you know, when you're planting 20, 25 pounds, you want the seeds and you can't quite play them with that one on what to do. So, are you having any problems like we got in Southeast Missouri? And no till cover crops the last two years. The bowls are absolutely wearing us plum out. So that's, that's, I'm hearing that. Um, I mean, I'm going to take them stands down to 11,000, 12,000 plants. Corn. Some guys in Missouri that I've talked, or not Missouri, uh, I can't, Co Coffee County, they're starting to put poles in the fields for hawks to land on. Yeah. Um, They've just dust that, that, and I, that hadn't been an issue for, like I said, it's... It'll be coming, I can promise you. Well, yeah, I can say that. Because <laughs> we didn't have nothing, and then they just, and I think they'll build populations and the disease will wipe them out, but if you walk a wheat field right now, planting wheat that's been in the cover crop no till two, three years, there's probably hundreds of, miles, hundreds of miles out there now. One thing they're saying, rolling and getting that stuff to the ground has helped a lot. Yeah. Getting it late, and that's why I went to Vetch. Cause that's the other thing in the south, we got beds. Got into this where like people ask, well, what do you do about up north? They go, well, just scoot over 15 inches. Can't do that, we have beds. What's the bed? You know, they, don't, they don't know what fur irrigation is. But that's why I went with the vetch. I'm hoping, you know, for both those people I've talked to, the vetch gets tight enough in your cereals <coughs> that when you plant, it almost acts like a roller and it'll lay it flat on the ground. So, I, I think on these slug and bowl issues, you know, there, there may come a time when, like crop rotation, there may be a reason to go back one year with some kind of tillage and put it back in. I mean, that, I, you know, one year out of ten is probably not going to kill you. And that, that right now, I mean, like I said, right now I'm going three to five years, depending on, you know, but I'll, I'm not destroying it. I'm hitting it real light and planting a cover right behind it. You know, at least I don't know if voles are in the ground or how they work, but I just stay really kind of right on the top. I have really runs and stuff like that. Is it like a are they like a mouse? What yeah, are they? Just a mouse. Okay. Midfield mouse. I know like well, not everybody can do this, but a lot of guys are incorporating cattle into this now. Yeah. Do that. So that's if you run cows on them in the winter time, it'll run them out of time. Yeah. And that that's the next step. Yeah. 
Mikey Taylor, if y'all ever get a chance to hear him, they're doing it. Great, great guys. They, they've they really jumped in there, and it's, it's a good operation. Real quick, if anybody wants to see the rainfall simulator, you get a group together, call your uh, district conservationist. Yeah, they've got them. Uh, service center. 